Good day everyone, I am January Caminoza and this video we will be talking about the American period, the American colonization, and the Philippines. But before we start, here is our objective. At the end of the lesson, we will be able to recall some important events during the American colonization and the Philippines. The arrival of the Americans. On 1895, Spain has only three remaining colonies left under rule. These are Cuba, Puerto Rico, and the Philippines. When on this year, a Cuban revolution broke out and the United States has extended its helping hand to Cuba for one simple reason. The liberation of Cuba would give them an advantage, especially on trading relations with other nations. And eventually, Cuba was able to rise against the Spaniards. And in 1898, there was two battles happened between Spain and the United States. The first battle happened on May 1, 1898, or the Battle in the Manila Bay. And the second one is on August 13, 1898, or also known as the Mock or Stage Battle. Now let's talk about the first battle. On May 1, 1898, Spain and the United States had their first battle in Manila Bay. With this battle, the Americans led by U.S. Navy Admiral George Dewey in participation of Emilio Aguinaldo attacked Spanish Navy headed by Montojo. With several attempts to win over and against the Americans, the Spaniards eventually lost the battle with the United States. But it does not necessarily mean that the U.S. colony had started on May 1, 1898. There are several events happened thereafter. On June 12, 1898, Filipinos led by Emilio Aguinaldo declared independence. When Aguinaldo returned to the Philippines after a self-exile in Hong Kong, he established a dictatorial government, or, or also known as the Malolos Republic. Through the promulgation of the Malolos Constitution written by Felipe Calderon, the declaration was proclaimed in Cavite el Viejo, or in the present-day Kawit Cavite. The event saw the unfurling of the national flag of the Philippines, made in Hong Kong by Marcela Agoncillo, Lorenza Agoncillo, and Delfina Herbosa, while the Marcha Nacional Filipina as the national anthem, now known as Lupang Hinirang, a composition of Julian Felipe, was playing and is played by Francisco Malabon Marching Band. The Act of Declaration of Independence was prepared, written, and read by Ambrosio Rianzares Bautista. It was signed by 98 persons, including one American Army officer, L.M. Johnson, as witness during the proclamation. For us Filipinos, the event of June 12, 1898 was the signal of independence against the Spanish forces that took around 300 years to stay in the Philippines. Apolinario Mabini became the advisor of General Emilio Aguinaldo. Aguinaldo established a republic that was not sovereign but a mere protectorate under the protection of the United States. Apolinario Mabini, however, advised Emilio Aguinaldo to change the form of government from dictatorial to revolutionary government. U.S. opposed on the declaration because they have plans of colonizing the Philippines in which it led to a guerrilla war against the America. At this point, we will be talking about the second battle. On August 13, 1898, Spain and the United States agreed to have a staged battle. On this battle, they agreed thereafter to sign the Treaty of Paris. What is Treaty of Paris? That was signed on December 10, 1898. So the Treaty of Paris was an agreement between the United States and Spain that Spain would turn over the Philippines to the United States in exchange of $20 million. This anti-Filipino treaty proved that U.S. imperialists had never recognized the Republic of the Philippines. Why? Because on the same year, as I have discussed earlier, Filipinos led by Aguinaldo already waged the flag in Kawit Cavite. We already signaled 
our independence, asking the Spaniards to accept and recognize the proclamation of independence. With the Americans having known the independence wage on June 12, 1898, they still pursued on the Treaty of Paris on December 10. In short, there is a conflicting acceptance happened between the Filipinos and the Americans. To officially start the American occupation in the Philippines on December 21, 1898, President McKinley made his benevolent assimilation. He announced that the U.S. would enforce it, its sovereignty over the Filipinos. So what is the white man's burden that preempted the benevolent assimilation proclamation by the Americans? The Americans believe that the white people have the duty of salvation and education to the uncivilized nations. And because they considered the Philippines that time as a nation that would need civilization, especially on education, they find it fitting to proclaim the benevolent assimilation. The response of the Filipinos to the American rule. The outbreak of the Philippine-American War happened on February 4, 1899. The flames of the war were ignited when William Grayson, an American soldier, fired at a Filipino soldier, prompting the exchange of fires between two groups. Before I end, I wanted to introduce to you and to understand why the United States would expand its colony, especially to the Philippines. During that time, the Americans were gearing towards industrialization, so the first three are the economic objectives that are why the United States would want to colonize the Philippines. So United States objectives in colonizing the Philippines. First is that Americans needed new market for their products. They wanted a country where they can export the surplus and whatever products they have in their country. Second, they were also on lookout for new sources of cheap raw materials because countries like us, especially the Philippines, has very rich in natural resources so they can get a lot of raw and cheap materials. Third, the U.S. hoped to use Philippines as its base in its dive to control the entire Pacific Ocean and other countries. In short, they made use of the Philippines as a diving board towards their plans in Asia, especially in Pacific Ocean and the nearby countries all over Asia. And lastly, President McKinley and President Wilson made the Filipinos believe that the Americans' intention was to teach the latter about democracy and governance. And that ends my presentation. Thank you so much for listening.